Hello, and welcome to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast with your host, me, Hal Coleman, uncensored and unplugged. Pay attention, take lots of notes, because you're going to find out exactly how to get more new customers, more referrals, and grow your business. Hal Coleman has been active in the pest control industry for over 40 years, including owning and operating his own successful pest control business for 18 years. He now devotes his time to helping other PCOs and other WCOs double, triple, and even quadruple their businesses faster than they ever imagined. Be sure to check out his website, pestcontrolmarketer.com. For more information about Hal's coaching program, you can reach him at 770-993-0004 or email him hal at halcoleman.com. Mike Stewart is known as the Internet Audio and Video Guy. Since the birth of the Internet, Mike has been showing small business owners how to get more new customers, increase their sales, and grow their businesses online using audio and video, now with iPhones and Android phones. For more information about Mike's coaching program and his online training courses, visit MikeStewartCoaching.com or email him, Mike, at InternetAudioGuide.com. Well, hello, boys and girls, friends. This is Hal Coleman, better known as Mr. Offline. You're listening to another episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. And on the other end, out there somewhere in Nashville, Tennessee, is Mr. Online, Mike Stewart. Do you hear me, Mike? I hear you, you know. It's that online connection that lets us sit here in the in the comfort of our homes and have a conversation about our passions, offline and online marketing, especially for the PCOs and the WCOs out there that uh, want to take their business to the next level. There you go. There you go. You know, you know I was thinking about my wife was uh talking to my daughter about they every year they join a community swimming pool here cuz I got two grandkids, you know, age five and a half and seven and uh they love to swim so they take swimming lessons and uh, so they were talking about which where they were going to join the same community pool or they're going to find a different place and i was thinking back about when i was a kid here in roswell there was a the city ran a swimming pool it was called waller park w-a-l-l-e-r and uh, there's Waller Park, which the land was dedicated back in the 40s by a guy named Fred Waller, I think. So they named the park after him. So it's Waller Park. And they had a swimming pool there. And, uh, you know, it was all fenced in and enclosed. And you had to pay like a quarter to swim all day. And they had a little bathhouse in there. And it's just a magical place. Every kid in Roswell just lived at that swimming pool. But they had two diving boards. They had one that was like a. Uh, a two meter board. It was like, you know, six feet off of the water. And then they had a five meter board. It was like 15 feet high. And at the time it's the, the low dive and high dive. That's what we call them. And, uh, I remember going there as a kid and watching all these big high school guys jumping off that high dive. And I just <clears throat> wouldn't have considered it in a million years. But, but then my, as I got a little older, some of my friends started jumping off that diving board, same age as me. And my next door neighbor, uh, Bill, he was up there on that high dive. He talked to me into climbing up on that high dive. And I, you know, the fear was just overwhelming. And he said, listen, I trust me. He said, it's a piece of cake. Yeah, I was a great swimmer. He said, you just jump off and you hit the water just like the low board. He said, it's just more fun. And Oh, I had all this angst over it for, you know, really all summer. And I finally, he talked me into climbing up there one day and I jumped off of that thing and hit the water and went under. And by the time I came up, all I could think about was climbing back up to the top of that ladder and jumping off again. That was the most fun and exciting thing I had ever done in my life. And from then on, you couldn't keep me off that high diving board, but you know, it's kind of like, all through my life, I, I kind of keep running into these high diving boards. Uh, you know, when, 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 uh, you talked to me and I'll, I'll fast forward up to when I met you and, and, and you told me I needed a website and, and uh, started talking about the internet. I needed to be on the internet. That was a high diving board for me. I didn't understand it. I, it was mystery to me. Now this has been God almost 20 years ago. And, 
uh, you told me I need to start doing videos and, and, uh, he had a bit video blog, yucky, nasty bug com, And the first time I, I mean, I kept thinking about sitting in front of a camera and videoing myself. You talk about another high diving board. I mean, man, I, that was just so intimidating. But once I did one and, and got it uploaded, I couldn't wait to do another one. And then the same thing was true with podcasting. You know, uh, it's, it's that fear of that change, that innate fear of change. Our subconscious mind is the controlling machine, uh, of our entire, uh, body. I mean, our, all our decisions originate in the subconscious. We use our conscious mind to really, to justify those decisions, but the subconscious hates change because change represents a threat. You know, our subconscious mind has been, been evolving for over 300 million years. And it's, it's what some people call the reptilian brain, uh, the lizard brain. It doesn't think it doesn't rationalize things. It doesn't sort things out. It doesn't add things up or subtract things. It simply, simply reacts to things. And so just like a changing, a shadow comes by or a noise or anything, any movement or anything will, will chase that lizard around on the other side of the tree. And it's the same thing with us. When, when change abruptly comes into our environment, it scares the heck out of us. Our subconscious reacts to it very negatively because it considers it a threat. Uh, and your subconscious mind, I call mine Elmo. Uh, you, you heard my Elmo presentation at the workshop. Uh, uh, your subconscious mind will trick you, deceive you, manipulate you, lie to you, stab you in the back. It will do anything it can to keep you from changing the routine that you're in right now. And when you look around and you see this in life so much, one of the best examples is, is somebody living in a bad marriage, a miserable marriage, but their subconscious mind won't let them get out of that marriage because it's comfortable being in that bad marriage because that's the routine that it's been in for a long time and going and filing for divorce and, and getting out of the marriage and starting over again is a big change and your subconscious mind just can't tolerate it. So, uh, it keeps you in that bad marriage for a long time, just like somebody will suffer with a toothache for forever, uh, before they, because the subconscious mind doesn't want them to go get the tooth pulled even if it's abscess, because that just represents a change. And so, um, now a good example of that, Mike is, you know, I was doing a workshop one time a few years back, uh, <clears throat> and this was an all day workshop. Uh, and, uh, I, I put in, you know, sent it out and, and, a, and a guy that I served on a committee with in the Georgia pest control association, uh, he was a kind of a one man operator and he was asking me about the workshop. And I said, well, you know, go to the website and check it out. I said, there's a, and you can find out more about it. And he said, you know, he said, my wife, my wife keeps just nagging me to get rid of this business. She says, look, just throw in the towel. I'm losing money. I don't know how to get customers. He said, I I'm struggling. I'm not really making any money. She works. And if it wasn't for her working, we couldn't live. He said, I'd have to go to work for somebody. But he said, I just, I don't know how to get customers. I don't know what to do. I said, man, if you come to this workshop, that's exactly what this workshop is about, how to make the phone ring. And, and so he, he went to the website and he looked at, at it and he called me and he said, uh, I looked at it, man, that looks great. Uh, and he said, uh, how much is it? And I said, well, it's, it's $997 for the day. He said, oh, wow. He said, I, 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 uh, you know, I'd love to come to it, but I just can't afford that. And I said, well, look, I said, this, this, which I said, I've been where you are before. And I said, maybe not as bad as you are. Cause I, I had a little bit of a knack for selling myself and you don't, ha he said, I don't have that knack. I said, I know you don't. And I said, but I said, this workshop will tell you exactly how to deal with what you're dealing with. And it's not complicated. And I said, you'll be able to grow your business. And th that $997 will be a drop in the bucket. And you just do all these things that you're going to learn in the workshop. He said, well, 
I don't know. He said, ah, let me think it over. I said, well, you know, I hope you can get in because I'm just, you know, taking a, a limited number of people. So let me know. So I didn't hear from him and I called him, uh, uh, you know, a few days later and I said, you know, I, I got a few seats left. Do you, you, you want to come to this? And he's, he, cause you really need it. He was really on my mind a lot and he's a really nice guy. He said, no, you know, I, I'll, I, I, I just can't afford it, Hal. And I said, well, I tell you what, I said, you need this bad. And I said, I'm going to make you a, a, an offer you can't refuse as long as you promise me you won't tell anybody. He said, what's that? And I said, well, you just come to the workshop and, and you don't pay me a penny. He said, really? I said, yeah, you don't pay me a penny. You just come to the workshop because it's going to change your life. And I said, down the road from now, a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, when you're making money and all that, if you want to send me $997, uh, you can do that. I said, but if you never do, it doesn't matter to me. It's not about the money. Get your butt into that workshop. He said, man, I can't believe you would do that for me. He said, uh, let me think about it. And I'm like, think about it? What's to think said, about? Yeah, let me think about it. So I said, okay, well, let me know now. Cause so I didn't hear from him for a few days and I called him back and I said, are you going to come to the workshop? He said, yeah, man, I, I appreciate it, Hal, but I just, maybe I'll catch the next one, you know, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I appreciate the offer more than, you know, but, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, just l let me know when you do the next one and maybe I'll, I can make it to that one. I said, okay. And I hung up the phone and now this has been a, this has been a good many years ago. And, and I, I said, there's something profound happening here and I, let me sort out exactly what it is because I want to be able to talk about this in the future. And it took me about 10 seconds to realize it, it wasn't the money at all. Uh, you know, he said he couldn't afford it. That was his excuse. So I took that away. I took away that objection. I said, come to it free. Uh, and then he still didn't want to come to it. And it was all about the change. You see, I had told him that you're going to have to change the way you do things. Yeah, it, 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 we, I made that pretty clear. I'm going to show you all the things you need to change and it's going to revolutionize what you do. But, but this old boy, just his Elmo, his subconscious mind just wouldn't allow him to do that. Uh, he, 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 and, and he's, he's not in the business anymore, but you know, he did throw in the towel, but it's that fear of change that I'm stepping into an, an uncomfortable place. I'm stepping out of the box into what may be muddy waters. I don't know how deep it is, yada, yada, yada. And even when you've got somebody standing there saying, like my next door neighbor on the high diving board, say, come on in, I promise you, when you jump off, it's just a piece of cake. And and he was right, but I didn't trust him because my subconscious mind just would not allow me to embrace that change. And uh, you and I have been through it. You've, you've dragged me kicking and screaming into changing environments through the years. Uh, and, uh, and each time it has turned out to be just like jumping off that diving board, Mike, it was a piece of cake. And, and you got to admit when I, when you teach me something and once I learn it, I plunge into it and, uh, and I have fun with it. But, uh, that, that's just kind of the essence of what I wanted to talk with you about today is, is, is how to get people to, to be able to break away from that subconscious chain and be able to embrace change and not fear change. Trust the mentors, uh, that, that they're telling you this will be okay. And this is going to work. You have to trust those people. And uh, it's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? And now here's a word from our sponsor. Google pest control marketer, grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004. Did you hear that? That is a jingle. But more than that, it is an audio logo and what I call a marketing earworm. But you know, that's a bug, that's a worm you want in your local market on YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, and podcasts like you're listening to right now. Yes, you should do a podcast as a PCO, but we'll talk about that another time. 
You want your market singing Google your name, what you do, and your phone number. Simple, but it works. If you want to cash in on this marketing bonanza, go to PestControlMarketingJingles.com to learn more. Or just call me, Mike Stewart, at 770-826-3662. Or call Hal Coleman at 770-993-0004. And we would love to show you how to do what we call search and call advertising with earworms. And oh yeah, it works on that old-timey technology of radio and television. Why don't you call us today and learn more? Google Pest Control Marketer. Grow your business like never before. Call 770-993-0004. And uh, it's hard to do sometimes, isn't it? Well, you know, as as you spoke here, I couldn't agree more. But, you know, I I was fortunate enough to travel the world and hear um, experts in all fears of mostly online marketing, but but basically uh, sound principles of success. My good friend Armin Morin used to say, success leaves traces. In other words, model what other successful people do. Take their mentorship seriously. And I heard this over and over again from the stage. And I'm going to say it here. If you expect to succeed, do what you fear. Do what you fear. Do what you fear. And... So the thing I would put out to everybody is what do you what be honest with yourself. What are you not doing because of fear? You know that man you were talking about that that fellow who sadly lost his PCO business because he feared something. You know, you were a- a- handing him the keys to the kingdom and he refused the keys to the kingdom not because of money. His objection was His Elmo, his subconscious said, oh, that doesn't work or that you you don't you're uncomfortable doing it. So don't do it. You know, it's easier to be fear. And and what did the great president of the past say in that famous speech? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Yep. Franklin Roosevelt. That's right. So so the, the mentors of the world are all over Google, Google fear you know, how to overcome fear. And you'll find all the the wisdom uh, speakers of the world. And and, and let me tell you a story, quick story about my fears and how Hal Coleman and Armin Morin helped me overcome those fears. Hal said, if you expect to build relationships of business on a local market, and this goes with anybody, he says, you've got to start networking. And I said, well, what does that mean? That means get up in the morning, go to a, 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 in front of a bunch of business owners and passionately share what you do. You mean I got to stand up and talk to people? You said yes. And you don't know how much that scared the living daylights out of me to stand up in front of 10 or 15 people at a networking meeting and give a 60 second overview of what I did and how I could help people. But I, I came to the very first networking meeting and how you were there. You remember it was at my friend's place. That's all I remember. I don't even remember the name of the group. Yeah, that was, uh, the, uh, North Fulton business resources group met right, at a little right. restaurant called my friend's place. Right. Friday Absol- morning. Absolutely. And that changed my life. And then that got me brave enough to go to the next level. And, the next level was, as I saw Armin Morin speak in front of 400 people, 400 people in the audience, and he's up there speaking. And I said, you know, I could do that, but I'm scared. But I said, if I don't do that, who knows what will never happen? Because, you know, speaking is one of the speaking, public speaking is considered a bigger fear than death. Yeah, it's de- uh, I think uh, public speaking is number one. Death is number two. You know what the third one is? I can't wait to hear. Dying while you're public speaking. <laughs> well, at any rate, I use tools to overcome my fear. You see, I could take a musical instrument in my hand and get in front of 10,000 people and feel at home. 
But if I walked out there with no guitar in my hand or no keyboards under my fingers, I was petrified. So the first time I did speaking to a group of over 300 people, I came out with a guitar. And that was my, that was my way of overcoming my fear. So the, the lesson there is... Yeah, the first time I did that, I came out with a fifth of Jack Daniels, and that helped me overcome mine. Well, we're not. I don't, at, I don't remember what I said, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't recommend that to anyone. But I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. I'm saying I did what I fear, and when I look back on doing the things I feared, I shudder at the thought of what if I hadn't done it? What if I had let my fear overcome my uh, understanding? I needed to do what I fear. Now I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not going to stand in traffic. Uh, because I fear that, but I know the results of standing in the middle of a freeway with busy trucks whizzing by could result in death. And I'm not going to do stupid things, but f- things you fear that can have positive results. And that, and like I said, you've got to decide what do you fear. Uh, you know, I, to this day, I'm involved with a networking group here. I found a great networking group, and there's about 10 of them in this town. They're called Networking International. I love them. And I can't wait. I'm actually speaking Tuesday morning at my group. I can't wait to share what I know with people that will make a difference in their lives. That's I took a fear and transformed it into excitement. The ability to go out there and share what I know that could make a difference in people's lives. You know, the money is a byproduct. And you know what's interesting to me? I've been in networking groups ever since that day you told me how. And I don't see many pest control agencies in those groups. So if you don't belong to a networking group, is fear holding you back? You know, get out there and passionately. Because a buddy of mine years ago, Rick Frischman, said, if you're not fired with enthusiasm, you will be fired with enthusiasm, meaning people will get rid of you. So, Hal, I think this is a great one. Go do what you fear and succeed. You know, Mike, yes, and there there are people uh, actually uh, listening right now who want to take me up on my hour, of my free hour of consultation about their business, but they fear picking up the phone and, and talking to me. Get maybe over, maybe Get they, over they, it. Maybe they fear that I'm going to try to sell them something. You know, uh, I don't do that. I, I, uh, I'll send you a questionnaire to fill out about your business so that when we spend our hour together, I don't have to spend the whole hour just asking you questions and we get nowhere. I want to get down to the meat and look for some low hanging fruit to make you aware of. And you're going to come off of that call awfully glad that you made it and it's not going to cost you a penny. And I'm not going to try to sell you anything. If you want to know about my coaching program, I'll tell you about it. If you don't want to know about it, I won't tell you about it. I just want to help you. So uh, and Mike is the same way. Mike will give you, uh, uh, you can call him anytime. You can call me at seven, seven, zero nine, nine, three, zero, 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 four, or Mike at seven, seven, zero eight, two, six, three, six, six, two. And, and if you choose to call either one of us to talk about your online or your offline marketing, you'll be awfully glad when you hang up that phone that you made that call. And uh, there's no pressure, and you're not going to – it's free. So I hope you'll take us up on it. Don't let your fears hold you back, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, it doesn't it – does, it's not brain surgery to grow a pest control business. It doesn't take, doesn't take anywhere near genius. It just takes uh, knowing the right things to do and having the courage to do those things. Uh, and not letting fear hold you back. So with that said, Mike, uh, I've enjoyed this as always. Folks, thank you for listening to this episode of the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Pest Control Marketing Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes and on your phones and in Stitcher on your Android. But more importantly, go to our website, pestcontrolmarketingpodcast.com, subscribe to our email list to always be notified of new episodes. You're never going to want to miss what we've got coming up next, and you never know what we're going to be able to do to help you with your pest control marketing.